Hello and a warm welcome to Art House. I'm Melinda Akinami. Today on the show, we'll be celebrating one of the founding fathers of Nigerian art. Yes, he was one of the pioneer students of the Nigeria College of Arts and Science, now Amadou Bello University, Zaria, in Kaduna State. A man of many parts whom the art community has gathered to celebrate as he turns 83. We'll show you that and much more on the program in a moment. Once an artist explores one medium and has exhausted it, move to another one. Art is soulless, art is vision, and when I pick up a literary work, I am a consumer of literature for its own sake. He's an art teacher, artist, and an educationist, a former federal art advisor who took over from the late Ben Enwong in 1969. And he has made an impact over the years, so the National Gallery of Arts put all his works in a book, while others are hanging on the wall of the Tafas Art Gallery in Lagos as the art community comes together to celebrate Timothy Fasi. <laughs> The event is twofold, an exhibition of works of art done by the veteran artist Timothy Fashuyi and a presentation of what he's achieved over the years which has been put into words. On behalf of the National Gallery of Art, may I now request Dr. D.K. to please open this book for presentation to all of us. Let us all join him in doing so, please, to the glory of God Almighty. It has attracted top-notch art connoisseurs and bigwigs in the art sector who've come from near and far to felicitate with a man who has his hands in many pies. He is one of the leading lights from the Zaria School. It's written all over his works of art as he's celebrating tradition whether his painting or sculpting, which is his new flame. Looking at some of his works, some collected ideas that have been incubated for a long period of time. So when he decides to put those ideas down on canvas or on the support that he uses, and interestingly he doesn't use canvas, he hardly uses canvas, he paints on board, which is one of the characteristics of the Zaria Art School. When he puts those figures on his canvas, you see somebody that is more interested in essence than in detail. And I, it's, a, it's an area that uh, many artists, uh, they struggle to get to. It's not easy to create an artwork with so few colors. And yet you can see on these colors several layers that he produces on the painting and you get the idea that he wants you to know how many colors he has laid. He wants you to participate in the process that led to the bringing forth of the artwork. It's simply incredible. Transforming the traditional calabash into art is his most recent project and that's what is being displayed in the exhibition hall besides his paintings. Anybody doing art and has material to do it will do better. When you have regular supply of materials, you can do better. Now, by introducing the local materials of plastic, of a calabash, I'm telling the young ones that you don't have to look for important materials to do it. Yeah, he's been in uh, art education uh, for a long time. And while he was in art education, he was also producing works of art. I was surprised when I came here some one year ago and he showed me his uh, various collections, uh, productions. And he doesn't sell art, he just collects. And uh, his works are very iconic, they are very deep, and um, it reflects a lot of our culture 
and you could see around you the various works um, done in both sculpture and painting. Uh, pa Fashu is um, a genius and um, he's produced numerous uh, people, you know, people like Koladi Oshinowo, uh, many others like that, passed through him. Fashu studied painting and he has now gone sculptural. So, which means he's very, very experimental and he's open to new ideas. And so, good, good things will be coming out of him. And uh, because of that, he's, he's, uh, he's going to continue to work until this last day. Because there are ideas in his mind and he's bringing them out. They talk about the many sides of this artist, some of which are not popular, while others liken him to an artist who should have been celebrated sooner. Baba for me can be likened like the artists that did incredible work in France by the name Brancusi. Brancusi was a sculptor that it was almost when his life was gone that uh, he was discovered. Uh, when I first met Fashi, it was just two weeks ago when I invited me for, uh, to his house for dinner with some of our colleagues when we came to celebrate uh, Koladi Oshinowo in the conference that wrapped his anniversary. I was not prepared to see the number of works that he has and the intensity of his engagement. I, I can just summarize by saying that he is the most obscure, greatest artist, greatest painter that Nigeria has ever had. And the good thing is that today, uh, that obscurity has been arbitrated by this book publication. And I want to believe that it should be the beginning of a very rapid scholarly work on him. The National Gallery of Art is one of the institutions impressed with what he's done. That's why they felt the need to document it for future generations. People like to remember that this great artist graduated from ABU since 1959 and at that time he worked in the ministries, he worked in various schools uh, before he retired and uh, the National Guard of Art decided you know, to publish a book on his life and also on the works uh, he did and that is why uh, we are here today and I think it's a great achievement uh, by the National Gallery for remembering this great artist and uh, bringing his works and also all that he has done uh, to the front banner. The book is not meant for him. It's meant for people to read and see what he has done. And for the younger artists, if uh, they, are, they are able to emulate, follow his footsteps, some of them will do better. Because somebody who started and if you are trying to do what you, you know, you are likely going to get it a bit better. So I believe that the young artists will have picked a lot from him. Even at 83, this veteran is showing no signs of slowing down and is ready to take on the world, a motivation for the younger ones. They should be creative in their thinking. They should look around for what they can do. It's not just wait for a job waiting for them. They should look for a job, create a job for themselves and employ people. And this type of thing you can do. Uh, this one, in this work, I use some people. The carpenter is always coming there when I do design to cut it. The painter is always there when I finish the cutting to make it. Somebody is already there to fit it. So that's three people at one time. So I'm a, a, an employer of labor. They too can create that type of situation in their small, small. It doesn't take time. It doesn't demand too much. Starting the project doesn't need more than 30,000. One would have thought that because he studied painting and he has been doing painting for a long time, what we see here should all be painting. But now we are seeing sculpture, which is a very, very good thing. And I think that that's something that uh, our younger people should emulate. Don't stick to just one style, one theme. Once you explore one and you have exhausted it, you move to another one, and move to another one, and move to another one. In that way, you continue to remain relevant as an artist. She's given over 50 awards 
to very young young artists, you know, Yaba College of Tech, uh, Lagos State Polytechnic, College of Education, and so on and so forth. For eight, an 83-year-old man, still giving out stipends to young artists to help them buy art materials to produce art. It's very commendable because it's very rare in Africa. Timothy Fashui's tenacity keeps the audience in awe as they wait to see which territory he intends to conquer when he's done with this medium.